Lord just really wants to minister to you, to those who may have loneliness in your life right now in this season. And a lot of times we attribute loneliness to, you know, older people maybe that have lost their spouses or maybe in, a, in that season of their life or empty nesters or whatever. But it isn't always older people that are lonely. Matter of fact, you can be in a crowd of people all the time and still be lonely in your heart and in your emotions. And, the, and Jesus just wants to visit you today. He wants to visit you today. And you know, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but um, most of y'all are fresh start people on a regular basis. And you know that if we stop to do something like this, that the Holy Spirit is highlighting something. And so that's not really an altar call that we make frequently that I can think of, but it's something that the Holy Spirit impressed upon me. And you say, well, how will the Lord minister to me? And I'm doing this maybe for those who may not understand totally. I know many of you do. But first of all, his presence is here this morning. And just being in the presence of the Lord. Now, everyone listen closely because some of you really don't understand this because you're not in the presence of the Lord a lot. And you don't understand what's happening to you right now. Right now, your spirit person is being awakened. Now, that's not a weird thing. That is actually how we are made by God, Creator God, God Almighty, Jehovah God. He is our Creator God, and we are a spirit person, and we live in a body, and we have a soul, a mind, a will, and emotions. But the core of who we are is our spirit person. That's what's going to live forever. Listen to me. When you leave this earth, you're going to transition to eternity. The moment that you take your final breath on this earth, you will be in another place, heaven or hell, you'll be in another place. And your spirit man is what is important right now. Your spirit man. Now, if your spirit man is in turmoil and it's not redeemed, it's not saved, you're not giving your life to the Lord, then that means there's all kinds of things that can wreak havoc in your life, in your emotions, and even in your physical body. Now, unless if you're a born-again Christian, this can happen as well. We all know this. But I'm speaking in these terms today, even more simplistically, maybe than normal, because I, I really just feel in my spirit that the Lord has brought a few of you here today on this special uh, women's event, uh, emphasis on honoring mothers, etc., to really wake up your spirit today. He wants to wake up your spirit. He wants to. He wants you to know what it feels like to be in the presence of the Lord. And you say, well, how's he going to minister to my loneliness? How's he going to help my loneliness? Number one, just being in the presence of the Lord changes everything. And number two, in the presence of the Lord, there is healing. You say, I I'm lonely. I don't need healing. Yeah, you need healing. You need healing. You need healing in your mind and your thoughts. You need healing in your in your emotions. You need healing in in your will and what you go after in your life. And that's and he's a healer. And the Bible says he's a wounded healer. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment for our peace was put upon Jesus so that by his stripes we are healed and we are made whole. And when you're in a realm of loneliness, you need to be made whole. And the first thing you need to realize today is that the Bible says that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Now, I realize that we need Jesus sometimes with skin on. Come on, somebody. We need friendships. We need relationships. We need these kind of things. But I'm telling you, maybe we have to go through things in our life where we go through these, these, these times of loneliness or whatever. I'm telling you, Jesus will be there for you. And so once again, I don't want to embarrass anyone today, but I want everyone just to lift up your hands all over the building. And some of y'all may not feel comfortable with that and that's fine if you don't feel comfortable with that necessarily but this is just an act of surrender to the Lord and if you're if you're that person today I'm going to pray a prayer I'm going to pray a prayer and we're going to believe that Holy Spirit is going to minister life to you because what loneliness wants to do is it wants to get in, an, in a mindset of death a mindset of isolation and so we're just going to believe that in the presence of the Lord that your spirit is going to come alive and that your emotions are going to be healed and you are going to leave here inoculated with the life of Christ on the inside of you. So everyone lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you now that your presence is in this room. Your presence is here because we have worshiped and because we have prayed. You said that you inhabit the worship of your people. And Lord, we are praying specifically right now in this moment for those who feel loneliness, Lord, young or old, anywhere in between. Lord God, I pray. 
pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you go and release right now only what you can do, and that is the supernatural impartation of the life of Jesus Christ into our minds, into our hearts, into our mindsets, oh Lord God, into our perspectives in the name of Jesus. And I pray that that heaviness of loneliness be lifted right now in Jesus' name. And I bind the lies of the enemy that makes you think that you have to live that way, that makes you think that you have to live in that capacity. And I break it in the name of Jesus, and I say that life, the life of Christ is being put into you right now, supernaturally by the Spirit of God. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we break that spirit of loneliness off of your daughters in the name of Jesus. I thank you. They are free in Jesus' name. Now somebody shout hallelujah. One more time. You are worthy of it all. Come on, let's sing it one more time. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. just one more time lift up your hands and say Jesus come on a little bit louder Jesus that's awesome Jesus I give you everything today you are my Savior you are my Lord you are my King and my Master you are Lord of my life no matter where I'm at no matter what's going on you are still Lord amen Put your hands together. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, y'all can go back to your seats. Why don't you greet two or three people as you're going back, just real quick. Amen. Thank the worship team today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to just release a word to you today. Thank you all so much. It was good. And I don't plan to be long, and of course, that's the famous last words, you know, around here. But um, I really, I'm, I'll be preaching again in the morning and um, on Mother's Day, and I, I really feel, I don't know how much to say, but um, for those of you who know me well, uh, it's hard for me to get out the prophetic gear, you know what I'm saying? And uh, especially coming off a revival weekend, but I really feel like the Lord has a word, a strong word for us tomorrow. Come on, somebody that for us fresh start coming off a revival weekend but we're going to weave mother's day into that by the grace of god and the help of the holy spirit we will but today i think i'm gonna have it's a spiritual word today of course from the word of god but i believe it'll help you practically as well and i've just kind of entitled this stages and ages times and seasons amen stages and ages and times and seasons the lord has really been um uh, speaking to me a lot recently and um, just dreams and encounters and just things leaping from his word and aren't you thankful when the Lord speaks to us amen and and um, the the strong words that were given to us uh, fresh start people on revival weekend about and about the the assignment of revival and um, where God is taking us as Krista said the Lord said into the next installment and uh, being aware of where God has us and etc cetera, etc cetera. so I said all that to say that um, just really been thinking a lot about the times and the seasons of the Lord amen the times and the seasons of the Lord and so I've entitled this today stages and ages times and seasons versus times and seasons. I don't know if they got that up there, but stages and ages versus the times and the seasons in our life. And so I read something one time and it goes like this. Um, welcome to stages and ages. Welcome to womanhood. It's been said that from birth to 18, a girl needs good parents. Hello. From 18 to 35, she needs good looks. Come on, somebody. And from 35 to 55, she needs a good personality. And from 55 on, she needs good cash. Hallelujah. Come on. 
Okay, man. <laughs> um, the, you start, we all start out in life at the wonderful age and stage of puberty. How many remember puberty? Come on. Okay, nobody does. Y'all are really old in here. <laughs> it's a time of awkwardness, a time of blossoming. It feels like everybody notices you. You, you uh, things start happening in your body. Come on, ladies. That, yeah, glory to God. It's fun time, not a lot of responsibility, so there's not a lot of stress, usually, all to go back to those days, hallelujah. Um, and it's those puberty years, come on mamas, that we think, you know, they think they know it all, hello. We have those puberty years, we think we know it all. Then there's the wonderful stage of, of being a young woman, and um, we're invincible, we're ready to change the world. We have actually all stages and ages represented in this room. Put your hands together for all the stages and ages represented. We become young women, we're invincible, we're ready to change the world. It's another time of blossoming in our life, just another stage of our life. Many new beginnings during this stage. We're checking out the world uh, in a new perspective without mom and dad a lot of times, checking out the bills that mom and dad used to pay. Come on, y'all. Um, sheds a whole new light on life and many things we celebrate in this stage of our life uh, college careers marriage children uh, we're getting grounded we're getting our roots uh, going down for life so to speak um, we still think we're know-it-all at this stage but we're a little shakier about it come on you know what I'm saying but then we enter the wonderful stage of middle-aged can I get a woo in the room and I like to call this reverse pre puberty right Come on, all my middle-aged women, come on. I like to call it, y'all, I just want to say that for those of y'all who have not entered into menopause yet, that glory to God in the highest, hallelujah. <laughs> you better know how to pray in tongues, come on somebody. It's a whole nother level of aggravation. Can I get the middle-aged women to give me a good amen, come on. It's a whole nother, you see, you think you're just losing some stuff that aggravated you in your puberty and in your young woman. No, 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 no. You're losing some things, you know, so it's, it's reversing. So your body is like going into like, it's like screaming all the time. Just in, it just manifests in different, everybody say manifest. It just manifests in different ways. But there is a grace, amen? There is a grace. Well, I say you better learn to, to pray in tongues. But I call it reverse puberty and one day it hits and you, you realize you're not as young as you used to be and, and and you face the, you find aches and pains. How many have found aches and pains that they never had before? Well, glory to Jesus. Muscles and joints that you know, you're introduced to things called wrinkles and emptiness. Come on. Of course, as I said, menopause. Um, this is the stage where many of us, seriously, our values change. What we used to value, it no longer impresses us anymore. Come on. What we used to be impressed. I mean, it takes a lot to impress me now. Come on. After you live so many years, it's kind of like... Mm, been there, done that, you know, kind of thing. So show me something different, you know. Um, we celebrate our children as they march into a life of their own. And for many of us, this is where we have grandchildren, which are wonderful. Come on, grandmas. They are wonderful. Or memes, which is what I am. Um, for many women, this is where, where we experience our greatest successes in our families and in our careers. Um, it's a wonderful time, actually. I mean, minus the menopause, it's a wonderful time, amen? And uh, because we, at this point of life, we know we don't know it all, but we're finally ready to learn. Come on, y'all, amen? I mean, it's a reality, it's true. You, you get a little bit more teachable, amen? And. Um, this is called middle age. And then, of course, there's the wonderful stage of the seasoned years. Can, can we put together our hands for the 90-year-old mother that we have with us? Amen. Bless you. She's amazing. She's amazing. I watch her in praise and worship a lot, and she blesses me. She's usually right down here on the front row, and she's always praising and worshiping Jesus. But the, this is the this wonderful stage of the seasoned years, and actually, this is when you do know it all, but you really don't care. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Give your neighbor a high five and say, oh, for that day to come, amen. You do know it all, but you don't care anymore. <laughs> And of course, and this actually kind of happens in the middle age as well. Instead of things blossoming, as in earlier years, now they're falling. We all know that happens. Amen. 
there's the retirement years, and there's actually pressures in this season of life that we've never had to deal with before. And it's just, it, you know, you don't want to be a burden on your kids. Your health is can be an issue uh, in your life and it's kind of like a Tupperware bowl lid. You know, you get one side down and the other side pops up. Come on, you know. Um, but now whatever your status has been in your prior seasons and, and times and stages of your life, um, you have now graduated in this season of life, this time of life, to the greatest level of maturity that our society knows. Amen? And the Bible honors this season. It says your gray is a crown of honor on your head. Now, if you cover up that gray, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Amen? I just thank the Lord for things that can cover up the gray. Amen? Come on. Um, you know, I, I, I just think that uh, above all, those who are in this season of life, uh, we have many in our church, which I think is amazing, uh, the, the ones the season, that are there in their seasoned years. Um, they come in and they worship Jesus and they put up with our loud music. Come on, somebody. And the, But we have here at Fresh Start, which I'm, we're so grateful for, and I'll be speaking about this a little bit tomorrow. We have a wonderful representation of every stage and every age of life, and we call it around here, generational revival. Amen. So let's thank Jesus for it. Come on, before I go on. Amen. But the Bible says in Psalm 31, uh, verse 15, the first part of that ver uh, verse, it says, my times are in your hand. My times are in your hand. Let's say that together. My times are in your hand. I'm talking to us today about stages and ages versus times and seasons. Listen closely. Stages and ages versus times and seasons. And the psalmist said, Lord, my times are in your hand. Meaning there, my seasons, the continuality, I don't know if that's a word, but the continual processes of my life and seasons of my life are in your hand. And I want to just say today that no matter what stage, no matter what age you are at, the Lord and the Holy Spirit gives us a grace to face that in our life. Amen. Everybody say a grace. And I believe, and I've learned now in this stage and age that I'm at, that, and, and I, I, I definitely learned some of it the hard way, but you need to learn to embrace where you are with joy. Embrace wherever you are. I mean, if you're on the young end that I started with or on the elder end that I ended with, wherever you are, embrace it with joy. Don't try to rush out of a season and rush into another season. Come on, I mean, I know we can't age-wise, but I'm talking about in our mentalities. Enjoy where God has you and enjoy the stage that God has you and live life in Christ to the fullness in that stage, amen, in that season, amen? Because I've got news for you, and this this is really, I guess, mostly for the younger ones in the room, but I mean, we can all attest to this. If you're waiting for the next stage before you start to enjoy yourself, you'll be discontent in that next stage, just like you're discontent in this stage. Amen. You'll find yourself once again waiting for that next stage and waiting for that next age. In other words, when I graduate college, I'll, I'll be, it'll be all right. When I get married, oh, everything's gonna, come on, married ladies. When I have kids, then it'll be, you know, when I, when I get this job, when I retire, et cetera, et cetera. I'm telling you, if you keep, if you keep looking to the next season for your greatest joy, you're going to miss what God needs to do in you and through you in this season. Amen. And until one day you find your wake up and you find yourself at the end of the stages and all you can do is look back and see that all you've been doing is waiting for that next stage to bring you something that you thought you didn't have in the last season in the last stage. I want to encourage us today that whatever stage or age that you're in, it is a not just a stage and an age, it is a time and a season in your life. And you need to learn to discern what God is wanting to do in you and through you in this time and in this season. And so the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, it says to everything there is a 
time and a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Let's read that one more time. To everything, everybody say everything. To everything there is a time and a season, and it says a time for every purpose under heaven. I want to encourage you today to begin to seek the Lord in the spirit and ask him for perception and wisdom and spiritual discernment as to the season and the time that you are in. Because let me tell you this, and the Holy Spirit just help me get this out the way you want them to understand it today, is that if you will concentrate more on getting in the spirit, the accuracy of the time and the season you're in, you won't be so much worried about the stage and the age that you're going through right now. Come on. Because I don't care what age you are and what stage you are, there was always purpose that God has for you in that stage and that age. This goes for the young, this goes for the middle, this goes for the elder. God always has a purpose and a reason for the season that you're in. And within that season is a stage and an age. And I guess my assignment this morning, and, and, and obviously this can work anyway, into Mother's and Mother's Day, but it applies to all of us, is that is to get our thinking so much off of how old we are or how old we're not or the stage that we're in physically or mentally or in our marriage or with our children and get our mindset on the seasons and the times that God has us in. There's a tribe of Israel that is called Issachar, and the Bible says that the sons of Issachar car what were discerners of the times and the seasons the bible says the tribe of Issachar the sons of Issachar were the discerners in other words they had spiritual perception everybody say spiritual perception they had spiritual perception of the times and the seasons that they were going through as a matter of fact as i was doing a little bit of research on this literally it was the sons of Issachar that recognized two controversial people People in the Old Testament and one of them was Deborah come on ladies it was Deborah and of course in those Bible times women you know were not uh, I guess appreciated and exalted even though Deborah was a prophetess and became a judge of Israel that but the, but it was the sons of Issachar that recognized the the gifting or the anointing or whatever that was on Deborah but they also did the same for David come on David there was a lot of people against David but they recognized I hope you're getting the picture of what I'm saying here because God wants to to give you a spiritual discernment, not just of what you're going through physically or what you're going through in the age or, or, or in the natural, and I'm not demeaning that, but he wants you to be lifted up higher than that. Come on, ladies. Come on, mamas. He wants us to be lifted up higher than our physical pain, higher than our emotional pain, higher uh, than our, our, our life circumstances, and he says, I want you to pray. I want you to get spiritual perception of not just the stage and the age, but most importantly, of the time and the season that I have you in. Because if we can have a discernment of the time and the season, we're going to handle this physical problem a lot better. We're going to handle this marriage issue a lot uh, uh, better. We're going to handle uh, the children a lot better. Come on. And all the responsibilities and the stress a lot better. Because I'm looking at it from this perspective and not from a stage and age uh, mindset, but from a time and a season. Is that good this morning? Come on. And I, I learned as I was researching this that um, when the when the children of Israel and the nation of Israel would go out excuse me, to battle. Uh, and most of us, especially here at Fresh Start, we know this. Judah always went first. Come on. Praise always went first. Judah always went first. When the nation of Israel went out to battle, uh, Judah always. But did you know that the Issachar was the second tribe to go out? Praise was the first tribe to go out before the battle. Ha. Come on. That's why you need to get your praise on. Come on. At every stage and every age. And then Issachar. And so praise went first. And then it, the tribe of Issachar went second, which is wisdom and discernment. And then, interestingly enough, Zebulun was the third tribe, which were the financers. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. So we got the praisers and we got the ones with wisdom and discernment. And then the ones, uh, uh, financers, uh, 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 if you will. They moved, when Israel moved out, this was the tribe order that they moved out in. Here's 
here's what I want to say today. When you know that every part of your life, say every part, is made up of times and seasons that are ordained by the Lord, you're able to enter a rest from striving and stress in any time or any stage or age of your life. Let me find this scripture here. Psalm 139, like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. We need to thank our Lord today that he knows the end from the beginning. Come on. We need to thank him that he knows the end from the beginning. There's some of you in the room and you may be worried about death today. You may be worried about dying. I remember it was either Alan or Corey when they were here a couple of months ago for revival. I believe it was Alan. He said the, the, the greatest, I don't know how he worded it, but it basically what he meant was, is, is if you can conquer your fear of death, come on, there is nothing that you cannot do. If you can conquer your fear of death, there is nothing that you cannot do. And there's some of you that may be fearing. I'm telling you, the Lord has written our days out. Come on. He's got them all written out. Yes, they're numbered. Obviously, and just Jesus comes back first. They're numbered, but we shouldn't be worried about that. We shouldn't be concerned about that. What should we should be focusing on is what is the time that God has me in right now? Not my age, but what is the time that God has me? What is the season that God has me in? And then get up in the spirit and get this person perspective of Psalm 139 16 that God ordained the stage that I'm in and God ordained the age but he also ordained the the time and the season and as I get in that perspective I can look from God's perspective and that will make me not only have more joy and peace in my life but it will make me be more productive and more fruitful in my life if I'm not all the time worried about oh I got another birthday coming up and I'm gonna be blah blah years old oh my god you know, some of y'all need to quit thinking old in here. Come on, somebody. <laughs> quit thinking old. Quit thinking, you know, how, how come is it? Like when we're getting ready, I'm going to be turning next next month, June 24th. If y'all want to give me, each want to give me $100 for my birthday. That's my, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. June 24th, I'll be 55 years old. Hallelujah. <laughs> And how come is it like like about six months out of your birthday when people ask you, well, they don't ask you now. How, I mean, you get to a certain age, they don't ask you how old you are anymore. But it's like, you know, ask you how old you are. You always tell the birthday that's coming up. You have to say, oh, I'm going to be... 35 or I'm going to be 72, you know, and you're just 71. How come we do that? How come it is? It's almost like we have to go to the, I'm like, bless God till midnight on June 23rd. I am 54. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. And the same for the next however many 50 years that I live. Come on. Moses lived to be 120 and his eyes were not dim, nor was his vigor abated, the Bible said. I said he was 120 years old, his eyes were not dim, and his vigor was not abated. I don't know what vigor abated means, but I'll take it. Come on. It means he wasn't feeble. It means he wasn't, it means he still had vitality. It means he still had, he had vision. He had energy. He had drive. He said, I'm, the, and then Caleb, I guess, was even older than that by the time, whatever. Come on. So I was like, quit thinking so old. We all have stages. We all have ages. But most importantly, you have times and seasons. And you need to get the Issachar anointing today. Ask for God. We need this anointing so we don't miss out on what God is doing right now in our life. Whatever stage and age you are. You know, I didn't realize this as much at 25 as I do now almost to 55. Can anybody say amen to that? You don't realize you, you, you have more of an age mentality and, a, and I got to be this and I got to become this. And there's anything wrong with that. I'll speak to that in just a minute. But within these times and seasons are contained the ages and the stages and the ebbs and the flows, the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs of life. But we must be careful to live in the times and the seasons and not the ages and the stages. And as we embrace, 
You know, the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. As we embrace the author of our times and seasons, we also need to embrace the finisher of our times and seasons. And we can rest assured and be confident that all things, put that scripture up there, Romans 8, 28, he knows us far better than we know ourselves and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. We need to put our hands together and thank Jesus today that every single detail, the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows, the ins and the outs, are working into something good if you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So within our lifespan, let me just turn this, and I'm not going to be too much longer, but watch. Uh, hallelujah. This is, this is amazing. When our, within our lifespan... There is a lot of chronos time. Now, some of you know, I'm going to explain that for those who don't understand. But there is a lot of chronos time, and there are sporadic kairos moments. Now, some of you all know the Greek that I'm using there, okay? No, I don't know Greek other than those few words there, okay? But there are a lot of chronos time and a sporadic kairos moments to the measure we steward well the chronos time. What is chronos time? It is the passing of the years. It is, in other words, y'all have already, some of y'all looked at the clock, look at your phone, and says it is, did you know, Pastor Kim, it's 1135? Oh, believe me, I have it right there in front of me. But you can ask anybody that comes to Fresh Star on a regular basis, that means absolutely nothing to me. Glory to God. Nothing. That is the chronos time. It is, it is what time is it? What age am I? What year are we in? 2019. What year are we going into? What year is this going to happen? What year am I going to graduate? What year am I going to get married? What time this? What time? That's chronos time. It's the mundane. It's the, it's the chronos. We have a lot of that happening in our stages and ages and in our seasons and our times. But... Let me repeat what I just said a moment ago. To the measure that we steward that time well, it will release the kairos moments in our life at a greater frequency. This is what I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. If we steward the chronos, if you are a lousy steward of your mundane, you're not going to get a lot of kairos moments. Come on. Because God has to keep us going. Kairos. What is kairos? For those who don't understand, I'm just assuming. It is, a, it, is, it is a due season in our life. It is an opportune, God-ordained moment. It is God's dimension breaking into our dimension and things opening up in our life, in our stage or our age. It interrupts and it is a God time, a God-ordained moment. That is a kairos time, all right? Kairos time. But if we do not learn to steward well the chronos, the everyday, the mundane, then it can withhold much of our kairos moments that God is ready to pour out and to break through with. Mundane will give way to the miraculous. Come on. All during the stages and the ages and the times and the seasons. Let me say that again. Your mundane, if you do your mundane, well, tell your sister, do your mundane well, amen. Come on, don't check out in your mundane, don't check out, don't get bored. Come on, God has you where He has you. Help me in the room. Come on, God has you, and we got to learn what we got to learn where we're at. And if we don't learn, then you're gonna stay right there until you learn. Y'all help me. Anybody ever been there? I, mean, I already told you how old I am. Y'all know how many times I had to go through that. You're gonna stay right where where you are in that chronos, all right, until you learn. But, but when we give ourselves to steward well, what do you mean by steward well? I mean, first of all, you're going to have to appreciate every day that God gives you. You're going to have to appreciate every stage and every age that God has you, brought you through and into and taking you into. And then you're going to have to steward it well. What is stewarding it well? It means that one day you and I are going to give an account for what God has given us on this earth. We're going to stand before Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be there with you. Your buddy's not going to be there with you. Your boss, your mama, your daddy, your hubby ain't going to be there with you. It's going to be you and it's going to be Jesus. And Jesus is going to ask you, what did you do with the life that I gave you on this earth? How did you steward it? What did you do with it? 
Did you goof off? Did you give yourself to a substance abuse and drugs and all this kind of stuff? Now, there's redemption for that. Jesus paid a price for redemption for that. But you've got to want that. You've got to walk in that. And then once we're redeemed, we got to give ourselves to the things that God has graced us with and, 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 given, and, and, and raising our children, come on, and, 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 uh, our, and, and stewarding our marriage as well. And the list goes on and on and on. Not time to go into today, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Stewarding this chronos well because the money, Mundane. I promise you, I've seen it happen multiple times in my life. The mundane will break way into the miraculous during different stages and ages and seasons and times. We need to thank Jesus for that today. Amen. It's going to happen. So let me give you a few things. First of all, you need to cease striving. Tell your sister, cease striving. Now that sounds kind of King James there. So say it like this. Just chill out. Okay. Just chill out. I mean, there was things, and some of y'all in the room, you know me real well, but um, uh, I mean, you know, God, glory to Jesus in the highest. I, you know, you just like, and I'm type A personality, all right? So you're just like, ah, you know, all the time kind of thing. And I'm still that, I'm still that. But, but as you go through the years, it's kind of like there's certain things that get your attention, that used to get your attention. I don't get the time of day now. Come on, somebody. It's kind of like, I ain't, got, I ain't nobody got time for that. Amen? Just tell your sister, ain't nobody got time for that. We got to get to that. Now, I'm not saying be rude. I'm not saying be insensitive. But I am saying, come on, ladies, pick your battles. Pick your battles. Pick your battles and discern what season you're in and what time you're in. And discern what fits into that season. Discern who fits into that season. Discern what you are to be doing in that season. And you do this by praying in the Holy Ghost, by getting in the Word of God, by getting up in the presence of God and getting the mind of God. The sons of Issachar had the mind of God. They had the mind of God for matters. And this is the main point today. Some of y'all are running to the internet. You're calling up your friends on the phone saying, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What should I do about this? Have you asked Jesus what you should do about that? Have you gone to the Word of God and just actually checked out what the Word of God has to say about that relationship that you're pursuing? Come on, y'all. Times and seasons. So you got to chill out because there's a lot of things you probably wouldn't stress over if you had the mindset of the Spirit on it. And the next thing is learn to forgive and forgive fast. You better quit holding them grudges against people. That'll mess you up. That'll mess you up. You need to forgive that husband. You need to forgive that child. You need to forgive that parent. You need to forgive that coworker, that family member. You need to forgive, 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 forgive. And you need to forgive fast. And forgiveness is a process. But you need to forgive. And then you need to get free from strongholds in your life. I'm trying to help you in your in your stages and ages, but most of all, I'm trying to get you up above that to look at the time and the season. Because I'm looking at uh, a bunch of gifted women here, talented women, anointed women. I'm going to preach about the anointing tomorrow. Come on, somebody. I'm looking at a bunch of anointed people. And God has great plans. is orchestrated for your life. But many of, much of the time, we... Um, cancel those plans because we have so many strongholds in our life that we just kind of keep going around and around the same circles all the time. And I'm telling you, I serve a Jesus that can set you free today from any stronghold of the enemy. What is a stronghold? It is something in your life that has a stronghold on you that is not of God. Now, it's good if God has a stronghold on you. But if there's things of the enemy or things of your flesh that has a stronghold, you need to get free of those so you can, you can live with joy and freedom and the utmost fruitfulness in the season and the time that God has you in. And then the next thing is, is move. <laughs> Just do this to your sister and say, please move, move. Not right now, but move. Move in your spiritual walk with God. Now, fresh start, this is revival. This is revival talk right here. If you don't grow with revival, revival will... 
outgrow you, right? And you got to move in your spiritual walk. If you don't move, we go from glory to glory. I'm going to be using this scripture. I don't know if it's tomorrow or next week, but it, it, revival scripture. I've used it before, but, you know, we, we are changed into the image of Jesus as we go from glory to glory. That's, that's really talking there. Uh, it's not like we take on this totally, and it can happen. It's not like we take on this shining, glowy thing, glory to God, that happens. But mostly what it's talking about is your character grows. As you get another level of glory, the light of the glory shines on you, and you're like, ah, woe is me. I, I repent. And so we go to another level of character. Come on. But we're moving in our spiritual walk because if you stop moving, if you stop, you're going to grow stagnant. And that's going to that's going to stifle you in your time and in your season. All right. And going into the next one. The next one is focus, work hard and dream big with God. And there's one thing that I've seen, especially in the assignment of revival, and I keep saying I'll preach into this, but y'all know, you know, when you got two messages going on in your head, it's really difficult. Amen. <laughs> but there's one thing the devil wants to do in your life is to get you off focus. Is to get you get you off focus, to get you out of balance, get you. But I'm just saying, and when I say work hard, I mean you know, at your your job, you're, if you're if you're employed or if you have a business, obviously you have to work hard. This is all Bible stuff right here. But then dream the dream of God, dream the dream of God for your life, not your dream, God's dream for your life, not your dream, but God's dream. I'll get on that in just a minute. And then the next thing is, don't be intimidated. Come on, somebody, be bold in Christ. Don't let a spirit of fear from the enemy don't let it intimidate you. But at the same time, may I balance that by saying, don't be an arrogant know-it-all. Don't be in, there's nothing more annoying. I mean, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, oh, glory to Jesus. Just don't be an arrogant know-it-all. Remain teachable. I mean, if I sense that in somebody, it's like, okay, I'm done. Come on, y'all. I mean, I may still look like I'm talking to you, but I really have checked out a long time ago. <laughs> If, you, if you're an arrogant know-it-all, it's like, I'll just, I'll look there and I'll shake my head, but I have checked out a long time ago. There's nothing that annoys me more. It's like, you may know more than me, but you know what? God loves me just as much as he loves you, and vice versa for that matter. Come on, ladies, we got to remain teachable. You won't make it to your next season if you're an arrogant know-it-all, amen? We're sitting with um, Sean Smith last week and, and Krista, and... Um, Many of y'all, if you've graduated 2T2, you've read his book, uh, I Am Your Sign, and some of you, maybe if not, maybe you bought it this last weekend. And I'm telling you, that is an epic book on revival. It will be a classic one day, I Am Your Sign. If you didn't get it this last weekend, first of all, you didn't do what I told you to do, glory to God. The second of all, you need to order that, I Am Your Sign. And uh, so we're sitting across the lunch table on Sunday afternoon last week in between the revival services and, you know, talking about myriad of different things. And Sean looks at, at my husband and me and he goes, so, so tell me what is your definition of revival? And I looked at him and I said, you wrote the book on revival and you want us to tell you our definition. Of course, he's just like, he's a very humble person, very genuine person. And of course, then we tell him our, our definition of revival. But you know what that spoke to me is that no matter how many years he has lived, no matter how many moves of God he has seen, no matter how many books he has written, and this one being one of the epic ones on revival, he is still teachable. Come on. He is still learning. Come on, somebody. This is the posture that we must keep ourselves in. And the next thing is have ambition, but don't be selfish. Have ambition, but don't be selfish. Please hear this announcement. You are not on this planet alone. Amen. You're not on this planet alone. So have ambition, but don't have selfish ambition. Set the bar high. Let's set the bar high. Come on, those of us who are in, you know, other seasons of life. Let's set the bar high. That's my goal is to set the bar high for the next generation. I want them to look at my life and seem, I want them to say, that's unreachable. That's unthinkable. That maybe even looks unattainable, even though it's not. They, I want to set the bar high because the floor that I set is the ceiling for them. Come on. The floor that 
that I set is the ceiling for them. Come on, we got, even though we got to reach for the next Kairos moment, we got to reach for the next season, we got to have an Issachar anointing, not just worried about what, how old I am, what time it is, do I have a boyfriend, do I not have a boyfriend, do I have a husband, do I not have a husband, <laughs> husband? do I have, <laughs> whatever, and, and it's not bad to want that, I'm not saying necessarily, but if you're letting that drive your decisions, then you are off track, you are off track, if it's when I graduate, when I get this diploma, when I get this job, when I get that, you have got the wrong agenda, God doesn't mind if you do those things, he doesn't mind of course that you're married, he ordained marriage, but that cannot be your driving force in this earth, the driving force in this earth is God give me insight and understanding into the season and the time that you have me because no matter how old I am or how old I'm not you have a purpose and a call and an assignment for such a time as this come on Esther's put your hands together so you got to know your moments I'm going to close with this. you got to know your moments. you got to have a spirit that's tuned in. And just start thinking about times and seasons. What if you got to know your moments? you got to know your Kairos moments. What if Ruth had gone home with Orpha? Now, for those of you who don't know the Old Testament stories, I don't have time to go into that right now, but it's in the Bible, trust me. What if Ruth had gone home with her sister or sister-in-law, whatever it was? she would have missed birthing the lineage of David and ultimately Jesus Christ. What if Abraham had killed Isaac on the mountain? Possibly Ishmael would have taken his place. I mean, of course, that's just a thought. What if Joseph had retaliated on his brothers instead of accommodating them? He had the position and he had the power to do so. These people knew times and they knew seasons. They didn't look at age and stage. They didn't look at circumstances. What if Peter had not gotten out of the boat? He's the only one other than Jesus that walked on the water, y'all, to this day. What if Mary, the mother of Jesus, had refused the seed of the Holy Spirit? Well, we all know. What about this thought? What if Judas had repented before he betrayed Jesus? What if Adam and Eve, come on somebody, had not eaten the fruit, discerning the times and the seasons? There are moments in your life, and if I could throw a mom thing in here, moments is M-O-M-E-N-T-S. Y'all like how I did that? <laughs> I've learned that you got to learn to stay in your lane. This is a side note here. You learn to stay and run in your lane. If you're running in somebody else's lane, you're running somebody else's race. And you, I just wanted to let you know you look awkward doing that. You have a race. You have a lane. You have an assignment. It's big, it's grand, it's awesome. Quit trying to look like somebody else. It's awkward. It's awkward. There are moments in your life which are times and seasons and we must discern well because you don't want to miss that moment. Don't be caught getting ready for something and it's already gone by. And don't miss getting ready for something thinking that you're already ready. Moments have times and seasons. Don't get ahead, don't get behind. Krista said something amazing on one of the times that she preached, she says, if you don't understand seasons and times, you can do the right thing at the wrong time. If you don't understand times and seasons, you can do the right thing at the wrong time. Ephesians chapter five says this, look carefully how you walk, not as the unwise, but as the wise, making the best of the time, the kairos, because the days are evil. Making the best use of the kairos, Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. A chronos mindset can make us miss our kairos moments. Always wondering what age I am 
or not wondering, but thinking about concentrating. And Paul is saying here in Ephesians 5, pay attention during your chronos life to what you're living and where you're living and how you're living. Because at any moment, the kairos can break through and you never know where God is going to take you. An effective steward of times and seasons will manage that chronos well. I have seen people over and over I have seen people over and over try to make their destiny come to pass. The emphasis on their destiny. I have seen people over and over in this church, 22 years, I have seen it, trust me, many times over, trying to make their destiny come to pass. And the reason why they moved out in front of a Kairos moment because they had a Kronos mindset. Their mindset was time is ticking. Time is ticking. Time is ticking. And that was their mindset. That was their, their visual of their life. So I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And they miss Kairos moments. They miss God's best because they were not discerning the times and the seasons they were counting their stages and their ages. I'll say that again. They missed their kairos because they were not discerning their times and seasons. They were counting their stages and their ages. Myself as an example, there have been, and I have seriously lost count, I told our 2T2 class this uh, several weeks ago, because we're teaching them on God's will for your life, et cetera, et cetera, in the first semester and among many other things. I have lost count, even up to this last revival weekend, of the number of prophetic words that have been spoken to me that my voice is a voice to the nation. Now, all the Fresh Start people wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, come on, y'all are just like, okay, well, there it goes again. Hallelujah, you kind of thing. And it's not, I don't mean that you don't care or anything, but I want you to hear what I'm about to say. You know, I'm almost 55, or she's almost 55. Why is God waiting till now? Because it wasn't time before now. I said it wasn't time before now. For whatever reason, it wasn't time. And when it happens, it will happen. Well, should you get business cards made? You know what? I already have business cards made, and I, I've had them for about, I don't know, 10 years now, and they've been in my drawer, you know, and I never give them out. They don't, they just, you know, whatever. I, it, it, it should, I'm just busy doing what God has called me to in this time and in this season. And then when God orchestrates it, if he speaks to say, do this or do that, I'll do this and I'll do that. But I'm telling you, if it is a true word from the Lord, because the prophetic is always possible, my friends, but it is not inevitable in your life. Some people run around, I got a prophetic word this, I got a prophetic word that. That's amazing, first of all, if it was truly from the Lord. Second of all, if it was truly from the Lord, it is possible in your life, but it is not inevitable. There are things that we have to give ourselves to. There are, there are prayers that we must pray. There are wars that we must fight. And I do all that all the time. I pray, not on a daily basis, but on a regular basis. I say, Lord, open doors that need to be opened. If that's what you want, if this is true, then I'm just using myself as an example. So, so maybe it'll help you guys. Guys, I'm not uptight about it. I'm not anxious about it. I'm not worried about if I'm on that platform or this platform. I'm really glad that I'm on this platform today, speaking this to you today, to a group of almost 200 women, encouraging you, stop thinking about your stage and your age, and get wrapped up in the spiritual perspective, and tune in in the spirit of the time and the season, and then a Kairos moment is going to happen. There's going to be a Kairos moment in my life. My husband and I had a Kairos moment 22 years ago when we were called on a telephone call to come to this church. You look at me now. Look at me. We didn't call one person. We didn't send out resumes. We didn't send out our addresses. We didn't tell them how great preachers we were.
were, how great of a singer we were. We didn't say anything. God was orchestrating behind the scenes here in Phoenix, Peoria, Arizona with a group of people that knew my husband from many years ago. And they said, that is the person that we want to come to this church to take over this pastoral position. I'm telling you, it was a Kairos moment. There was some turmoil. There was some prayers. There was some pressing that had to go in before that moment came. And finally, my husband and I said, you know what? We are here in Virginia at that time. We are going to give ourselves to what God has put our hands to. And I'm telling you, it was a matter of probably eight months or so that we got a phone call on a Friday night. And since that Friday night, it has been 22 years and maybe 22 more. We'll see how things go. That God has called us to this city for an outbreak and an outpouring of revival. I'm telling you, we got to go up higher and get an Issachar anointing to not just say what age am I, what stage am I, but what season am I? God, we thank you. Stand up on your feet and put your hands together because God has his eye on you. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands all over the building. Come on, pray in the Spirit. If you're Holy Ghost baptized, pray in the Spirit. Some of y'all need to get yourself unstuck from your stages and your ages today. And you need to ask God to come upon you with an Issachar anointing so you can discern the time and the season. If you rush that season, daughter, sister, you're going to be sorry. You're going to be sorry. I've seen numerous people rush their seasons. And some of them are not even in church today. Numerous people that had thought their talent was going to do for them somewhere else what it was doing for them here. And they got out from underneath the anointing. And they got out from underneath the covering. And they got out from underneath and disconnected from what was giving them the source that was growing them too soon. You need an Issachar anointing. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Father, I thank you today that those who have been stuck in stages and ages are being set free today in the name of Jesus. And that the time clock, the, uh, the, 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 the clock is not an enemy to them, Lord. Whatever capacity that may have been, Lord. That it is not an enemy, Lord, but it will become their friend. It will become their friend. Because, Lord, you do not operate in time. You operate in eternity. Come on, ladies. You do not operate in time. You live in eternity. Let us have an eternal mindset, oh God, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Now, I'm just going to pray over you today. I don't necessarily feel like a mass altar call uh, per se. I mean, this is the type of message that it was. But I really, I really believe, especially for some of you, that this really, what I've been talking about today, really bothers you, really bothers you. You're really worried about the stage of your life and things that are happening and going on. And hopefully, if I've done a good job today, I've painted a picture that God wants to take you up higher and help you see over your problem, greater than your problems, higher than your problems, higher than your limitations. And he wants you to see that with his grace and with his mercy and his ability and his anointing, that there are things that are possible in and through you. That if you will just spend some time with him, if you will just spend some time in the word and quit trying to order your own life. I said, quit trying to order your own life. I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time. Let's speak to some of the younger ones in here. And I don't, I don't know where everybody's here. And y'all, I want me to tell you this. I can look at a crowd of people because some people will go away. She was talking right to me. I wouldn't have a clue you were here, all right? Just trust me. I wouldn't have a clue you were here. I can look even a crowd this size, and I don't even remember who's here. I'm just following the voice of the Holy Spirit right now. But especially some of you younger ones in here. Y'all need to chill out. Y'all need to chill out. You need to chill out and you need to get with God. And you say, God, is this my desire or is it your desire? And if it's just my ambition and my goals that I have, you can set a lot of goals and some of them be good and you meet those goals and totally miss God's will for your life. Totally miss God's will for your life. And so this is a time of repentance for you today. 
You say, Lord, I just, I got to give my life to you. I got to give all of it to you, all the stages, all the ages, everything. And then there's those, maybe you're here today and, you know, you are older and you feel like that uh, there's not a lot left and your, your physical body is, you know, obviously not at the capacity that it used to be. And I do understand that. Obviously, I haven't reached that season yet, but I do understand that. I understand it more every day. I do understand that. But I want to tell you that God is never finished with us on this earth. My husband has, um, first of all, I honor my father-in-law, who is 81 years old. He usually sits right over here where that reserve sign is. By the way, if you wonder why there's a, a lone reserve sign right there, that's where my father-in-law, okay, right there, my husband's dad. Um, and I honor him for still seeking the Lord and being used of God. But he has a brother, he has a brother in Oklahoma who is two or three years older than he is. And he and his wife are still pastored a church, smaller church, 150, 200 people maybe, something like that. But they have been in ministry forever, y'all, forever. And he was recently, pre recently preaching here in the last few months and, um, got through with the message that day and long story short he was having a heart attack while he was preaching and they got him got him help quick enough and checked him out and did whatever they needed to do and he's perfectly fine now we praise God for that but I want to tell you what I admire about them they're probably like 83 I guess something like that is they have, and I, I do know there's time when you have to shift and you have to hang up some things here to be effective in this and that. I do understand that. But what I admire about them is their hunger, first of all, for God and their relationship with Jesus Christ. But it's that while they're on this earth and whenever they pass through to eternity, they want to leave everything here. They won't, don't want to have, have anything held in reserve when they cross over to the other side. I love their tenacity. I love their focus. I love their anointing. They were with us in service a, a few months ago on Revival Weekend. And I just say to you guys who may be in that season, things we do look different in different seasons that we're in. It looks different. But the way that I see my God in the Word of God is that unless there's rebellion or disobedience, God always want to take you into more. He, if you release something here, he wants to take you into greater. He doesn't release you from this to take you to lesser. Now, it may look different. It may, it may sound different. It may be a different capacity, but it's always greater. Come on, somebody. It's always greater. So lift up your hands. And whatever category that you may be in today, come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, Revival family. Holy Spirit, you're speaking. Amplify your voice in the hearts of your daughters today, God. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, every single life, Lord, you shine the spotlight on right now. Illuminate this word to their heart, I pray. Lord, I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment. God, I pray. I pray this is a car anointing upon them today. God, I know it's something we have to cultivate in our own spiritual time, but God, I just pray, Lord, that they would they would move into that. They would move into this, Lord, especially as we are here as a revival family, moving into this anointing to discern, anointing to perceive the times and the seasons. God, I thank you now that you give them wisdom. You give them revelation. You give them understanding of the season and the time that they're in and that you use them to the highest, utmost capacity, oh Lord God. And Father, right now we repent. We repent of, of decisions that we have made outside of your will. We repent of decisions that we have made outside of your timing. We repent, oh Father, of maybe even doing the right thing but at the wrong time. Lord, we repent, oh Lord. We repent and we say, Jesus, take the wheel. Come on, ladies. We say, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take hold of every aspect of our life. Show us, guide us. Lord, your word illuminates our, our pathway. So as we get into your word, let it come. 
come alive to us, oh God. And I pray for women in the room today that they may be going through struggles and trials, maybe in their physical bodies or maybe in their marriages or with their children. And I pray the grace of God over them. I pray a wisdom and a revelation and an understanding. I pray for those maybe who have businesses or maybe are, are employed, Lord, and there's a lot of stress and a lot of things that are on them and responsibilities. I pray the glory, Lord, the glory, the glory minister to them now. And I pray the anointing to break every yoke of bondage of the enemy, the anointing to break every yoke of bondage of the enemy in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I thank you now. I thank you now. We have a fresh perspective from your spirit and from your word. And we want to live this life that you have given us to the utmost capacity, not just by paying attention to what time it is, but by paying attention to the season that you have us in and what you're doing in us and what you're doing through us. Put your hands together one more time and let's give Jesus praise. Come on, let's sing it one more time. You are worthy. Let's lift up one more worship. Come on, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Thank you for watching Fresh Start Church's YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this message, take a minute and click the subscribe button so you won't miss any of our videos. If you've been impacted by Fresh Start Church and want to partner with us to continue to reach others, you can text OFFERING to 623-299-2707 to give right now. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.